All right, so this video, we're going to talk about how to actually create a database that you'll then be able to use in your Visual Basic projects. Uh, we're just covering two, three, and four from the focus sections of the chapter. All right, so there are three major steps to creating a SQL Server database. Um, the first thing you need to do is actually create the database itself, but then after you've created that file, you have to define the uh, table or tables you'll be using in that database and then start adding records into it. So let's get into how to do each of those. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is actually create the database itself and get it added into our project. And we can kind of all do that at once using uh, Visual Studio. So what we'll do is we'll go to project and then add new item right here. And then uh, it's easiest if you can go into installed and then common items and click data. You'll see a whole bunch of options. The one that we're really interested in is service based database right here. It's an empty SQL server database for uh, service based access, which is exactly what we want. Service based means that there's protected access to it. So protections against things like um, data loss or whatever. So. Uh, so what we'll want to do, um, once we actually click service-based database, we have a name right here that we will be able to change to whatever we want. Um, I'm going to change it to course, or sorry, my courses, following the example that they provide in the textbook right here. But you have to leave the .mdf file name extension. It stands for master database file right there, but that is the... Um, database of a SQL server, the uh, file extension for that. So you don't want to change that to anything. You just leave it as .mdf and you put whatever name you want before that extension. So you can just uh, add it like so. I take a little bit of time. There we go. So now um, we have in the solution explorer, this mycourses.mdf right here. And then you can actually right click it and open. Um, and you'll have now this server explorer with all of these uh, fun little things, the tables, the views, all the stuff that, you know, comes as part of the database itself. Um, so that's how you get to the server explorer window right there is you go to the solution explorer, you right click, you hit open, and then it pops open in the server explorer and then you can actually pin it like that so that it uh, stays sort of where the toolbox is at least in my window so you can pin it and the server explorer will just stay there for you so now that we have our database file um, what we have to start doing is adding in our tables that we're going to use and for each table that you want to create and put into your database you have to specify all of the field names and the data types that will be stored in those fields. Um, now note that this isn't a Visual Basic file. This is a SQL, uh, you know, server table. And SQL is a completely different programming language than Visual Basic, which means that the actual data types you'll be specifying as going into each of those fields are going to be different than the Visual Basic data types. So that's really important to remember. All right, so I have right here a table comparing um, Visual Basic data types that we're familiar with against uh, SQL data types that we are not as familiar with. So uh, first off is the Visual Basic Boolean, which holds those true and false values, right? Well, in SQL, it's known as a bit, uh, the same bit as a sort of in computing, we have that bit that's just a binary digit. It is either zero or one. Well. The uh, SQL bit is a representation of that, so a bit is either 0 or 1. But it functions the same as a Boolean. A 0 is the same as saying false, and a 1 is the same as saying true. So Boolean true is equivalent to bit 1. Boolean false is equivalent to bit 0. Now decimal in Visual Basic is equivalent to the SQL decimal type as well, but you'll notice that there are two parameters for the decimal type. Um, and that's because you actually have to specify uh, the total number of digits in 
a um, decimal in SQL, as well as the number of digits stored to the right of the decimal point. So a decimal, uh, when you pass in five and two, is going to be five digits in total, but uh, two digits to the right of the to the right of the decimal point, which means three to the left. So zero 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 point zero zero. So one hundred point one five would be of the type decimal five two, but ninety point six seven eight would not be of the type decimal five two because there are three digits to the right of the uh, decimal point. So decimal five two is all of the numbers that you can store as numbers with five digits such that two of them are to the right of the decimal point. Uh, so that's what that is. Uh, what's really important is that decimal, say, 5-2 is not the same as decimal 6-2 or decimal 5-3 or something like that. Decimal 6-2 can contain every value that decimal 5-2 also contains, but you know, decimal 6-2 also contains more values than decimal 5-2. So they're kind of different types from each other. That's really important to know. So when we're working with decimals in SQL, you actually have to specify how many digits there are, as well as how many of those digits are stored to the right of the decimal point. You have to do that manually, whereas uh, it's all kind of consolidated into one decimal class in Visual Basic. Now the Visual Basic double is represented by the SQL float data type. Uh, double is a floating point data type. I talked about that before. Uh, and then integer in Visual Basic is represented as the int um, data type in SQL. All right, and now with the strings, you might notice that there are two representations in SQL for strings. Um, they are pretty much uh, character arrays rather than full-on strings as we think of them in uh, Visual Basic. But these two uh, actual representations are very similar. Uh, they both take in one argument, as you can see, but there's one key difference between them. So the char SQL data type is a fixed length string. It takes in n, it is a, a string of n characters in length. Um, you can pass in up to n characters, but it will always end up becoming a, uh, n character string. So for example, if I had a um, if I had a field that took in uh, data of type char 30 and then I passed in the word blah as you know one of the entries into that table inside of that field, blah itself has four characters, but because it's inside of a field of type char 30, uh, it gets a whole bunch of extra padding and ends up becoming just a length 30 uh, char data type. It, it has 30 characters in it, even though it still looks like there's only four of them in there. Uh, on the other hand, varchar is a variable length string. You can have up to n characters in there. So if my um, field that in my example that I talked about before was a varchar of 30. I could pass in any string of length up to 30, and it would actually represent it correctly as its appropriate length. So blah inside of that field would be a length for string, even though it's inside of a varchar uh, 30 type field. So that's a major difference is that a field with type char n it will make all of the strings you pass in that are less than n in length, they'll all be converted to n length strings through some process, whereas varchar will let them be whatever length that you passed in so long as they're less than n. And of course you can't pass in strings that are, are greater than n. They can be n length, but they can't be, they can be less, they can be equal to, but they cannot be greater than n. Uh, in either case. So yeah, uh, varchar is great if you want to avoid all that padding and if you want that um, precise um, data on how large your strings actually are, because char will always make them n even if you pass in less than n characters, varchar will give you back how many characters you passed in. 
Varchar is like slightly less efficient than Char because of all the calculations it has to do to maintain the the um you know passing in the right amount of uh characters and all that kind of stuff, but it takes up less physical space. And at the scale that we're working in, it probably doesn't matter which one you're using. If you want to just get the um accurate length of strings out of your fields, then use Varchar. Alright, so to actually add a table in Visual Basic, what you're going to do is in the Server Explorer, you're going to right-click Tables right here, uh, underneath your database file that you just created, and then add new table like this, and it'll take some time to load. Alright, and then you end up with this window right here, which is the Database Table Designer window, and it will auto-populate with this first um, ID field right here. It's the only field that it gives you, but it automatically creates this um, deep, you know, this default ID primary key right here. So this right here shows that we are using this field as our primary key in order to differentiate which records that we have that are unique. Uh, we have the name of the field at the very beginning, which also shows up here in the um, this uh, field information area. And then the type of data that we're putting in the field, and then allow nulls, which is if we're allowed if we're allowing uh, empty values inside of our field. Which for our primary key, we will not be allowing empty values inside of our fields. Uh, all of our primary key entries have to be actually filled out. What I'm going to do really quick is click into the name right here, change the name to ID all capital instead of uppercase I lowercase e like that. Um, by the way, this um, area down here with all the code is called the T-SQL um, pane. Uh, this actually just uh, shows us the SQL code that actually defines the table in our database that we're creating and that is being rendered up here. Uh, so actually what I need to do as well is also um, name this courses. Uh, that changes the name of the table as a whole, rather than it just being called table. So now what we can actually do that's really helpful is um, tell uh, SQL Server to actually automatically fill out our ID property every single time we add a record, starting at the default value of, or the base value of one, and then increasing by one as well. So the first course we add in will have ID 1, the second course will have ID 2, the third course will have ID 3, and so on and so forth. Each uh, subsequent ID will just be one number larger than the previous one, so it'll be super helpful for that. We don't actually have to fill out that ID ourselves and make sure that we're getting it right and not duplicating anything. It just does it by itself and makes sure that it does it properly with no duplicates and no ID numbers skipped. So what you want to do is um, come up here and click on this column right here. And by the way, the uh, little key symbol you might be able to see shows that we uh, are talking about the primary key for this table right here. That key right here is uh, the same thing as this text down here. But you can click on this and let me actually zoom it in a little bit. Um, I can only zoom that in a little bit, but that'll probably be helpful still. Regardless, I will click on this column right here and then come down to properties. There's this identity specification property right here. By default, it's false, which means that uh, SQL is not going to automatically um, you know, fill that out for us. Uh, we, it's going to be you know, up to us to like actually put that data in. But now uh, when we set that to, let's see, I have to expand that set this to true. This is identity down here. It needs to be set to true. Now it's an identity, uh, which means that it will actually now get automatically filled out. It has like a an identity. It has a specific set of values that it needs to go in. Um, the identity seed right here essentially is the starting value. So the first, um, the first record that we put in into this uh, database will have a value, a uh, ID value equal to the identity seed. 
So it would start out as one. If I put 10 in here, it would start with an ID of 10 instead, but we'll leave it at one. And then the increment is how much it increases every time we add a new record into the um, table. So it increments by one in this case. The second record would be two, the third record would be three, and so on and so forth. If I change this to five, we would have ID numbers one, six, 11, 16, and so on and so forth. So that's what those do. But now uh, the ID field actually gets filled out for us. So we don't even need to worry about typing in the ID manually. It just happens for us, which is really neat. Now the data type will be integers because it's just an ID number, nothing too fancy. If it was something more complicated, like some alphanumeric ID that we had to put in, maybe that might be one of the string equivalent data types, but we'll just leave it as int for now. And that'll just be really simple because yeah, it just auto populates for us. And we um, do not allow nulls because we never want the ID to be empty. If it's okay for a field to be empty, you would allow nulls like this, but you definitely do not want to do that for your primary key. And if you come down here to this um, T SQL pane, this SQL actually is the equivalent of doing all of the property changes and settings and stuff between this view right here and the properties window. All of that stuff we did is equivalent to just typing out the SQL code inside of the create table area of the T SQL pane. All right, so we can actually add in another, um, we can add in another uh, column very easily. We just click this blank line down here. Uh, I'm going to add the course codes from the table that I had showed off earlier with all of those uh, courses and the titles and all that kind of stuff. So this is, actually implementing that in Visual Basic. Um, so the name for this field is going to be code. Uh, and that actually creates a new entry down here under this uh, T SQL area. And it also creates a new column like this. Now for the data type, um, there's all these data types that we can work with. There's nchar. nchar is different than char because nchar is the number of actual characters versus uh, char is the number works off of the number of bytes technically, since some characters are more than two byte or more than one byte long. So uh, n char of 10 is 10 characters guaranteed, whereas char of 10 is 10 bytes, which may not be 10 characters, whatever. We're not gonna worry about that. Um, but we're just gonna go down to var char right here and do var char uh, rather than 50, uh, I'll follow with the textbooks example and put in eight right there. And then every course should have a course code. So I'm going to uncheck allow nulls. And that's how we add a new column to our table. All right, uh, off camera, I just filled out the rest of the um, actual fields in here. Nothing super crazy. We're allocating 40 characters for the title. The uh, number of hours is going to be an integer. The grade will be one character. So A, B, C, D, F, W, whatever. Uh, maybe two if you want to include all the fancy two character um, options out there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. You might notice that I have allowed nulls for the grade, which means that this database actually allows us to include um, classes that are in progress. So if a student is currently taking a class, we wouldn't know what the grade actually is. So we're in this case allowing null, you know, empty grade values where we'll fill in that database once they actually complete the class. All right, so I've actually specified all these changes to the database, but we haven't actually saved them to the database yet. We haven't actually you know, added this table to the database. So what we actually have to do is now update the database with this new table that we've created, which is really important. Whenever you are adding in a table like this and when you actually want to make changes to your tables, you always have to update or else you will lose those changes that you made. So what you want to do is click the update button right here. Um, there'll be this uh, preparing update script thing. It's taking some time to think about everything and there we go. It essentially um, is actually cre creating a SQL script for you that communicates with the SQL database that tells the um, you know, Microsoft SQL Server uh, database management system 
to uh, actually add the table that you just specified into the database. So that's why you have to update it. Visual Studio is generating the script that you need to communicate with Microsoft SQL Server in order to actually update the database. So you're not directly modifying the file. You're just using Visual Studio to send a message to Microsoft SQL Server, which will then update the file if it thinks what you're doing is OK. But now what you do is you update the database. And down here, you have this new window that showed up, the Data Tools Operations window, which is next to Error List and Output. Um, and it will give you the status of everything. So let's see. There we go. If I scooch that up a little bit. It will give you the status of your update, and down here it says update completed successfully. If there are errors, you will of course be given errors. But that is how you actually create a new table and add it into your database. Remember, creating the table up here, you know, defining it like we just did with uh, using this view right here, or writing out the SQL yourself if you choose to do that. Um, that doesn't actually change the database at all. You have to then click update and all of this will be translated into like the commands that Visual Studio will then send in order to update the database for you or have Microsoft S SQL Server update the database for you more specifically. All right, so once you've updated, now you can actually go to the Server Explorer window, which I will pin over here. Um, Go down to the tables area and you'll see the courses table that you've actually just made. Uh, when you expand it, you'll actually see all of the fields inside of this table along with all the properties over here. You'll get information like the data type and the um, you know, the length, if it's, it's a char in this case, so the length is one. Um, all this kind of information that we just added in. But um, if you want to actually now add records into the table after you've, you know, refreshed it and all that, you would right click courses and um, you'd actually go to show table data. And now this actually shows you the, um, the actual data for the table, which is currently empty, which is why everything is null right now. But this is by itself a view of the table. Um, we have the connection ready right here, which means that we're ready to get anything that we change in the table up into the database. And yeah, this is the place where you would go to um, actually start making, you know, putting in records into your table. So when you actually want to start adding in records, um, you'll just start filling in the information in this first line right here. Now, notice that this is a little bit grayed out, which means that you can't actually add it. And that's because we um, did that whole setting this to an identity thing and making it so that it fills out all of its values by itself. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to mess with ID right here, but I can go into into code and start typing things in. So following the text example, I will type in ACC OU, oh, ACC OU 110, just like that. Um, and I have an error. Let's see, the data in this cell has been changed. The change has not been committed to the database. The original value was null. Press escape to revert the cell to its original value. That is going to happen. Um, but really, what we want to do is just ignore that for the time being. We'll press tab to go to the next field, which is the title, um, in this case, accounting procedures like this three hours grade is a once i press tab again all of those will actually go away and also the id section has actually been filled out so that's a really that that is basically the procedure for actually filling everything out now those exclamation marks were partially because the um it it didn't actually sync the it hadn't actually synced anything yet. Um, given that, you know, none of these are actually allowed to be null, 
Except for great, of course, but none of these are allowed to be null, so that's where a lot of these actually come from, is the fact that it couldn't actually sync anything because we left some of these uh, fields in the record as null. So when I type in next uh, ing101, oh, ing101 and press tab, I can't sync this particular record because um, this is null and this is null and this is null. So ing101, the data that I put in there has not been synced at all. The previous value is null. Um, that's what that error is all about. So uh, it will stay like this until it is able to actually be synced and saved to the data, which it actually does um, automatically once we actually are in this particular view. So creating a new, a, a new table, you have to do the update yourself, but then actually putting data in, it kind of gets ha handled automatically once you open up the table in the way that we did. So I'm going to keep on filling out these classes based on the example that I should before, and I'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, and here's just the full defined table when you are completely done with it, if you are following along with the textbook example. Um, so if you also, uh, you can drag these along to uh, adjust the width of certain um, fields and that kind of stuff, just to make it easier to see everything in here. Uh, you also, yeah, just that's the whole process right here. So once you're done, of course, make sure you save these solutions and then you're able to actually close out the uh, the actual data window that we're currently in right now and the table design window that we were looking at before. And yeah, that is what we need, that that is all we need for um, actually creating and putting stuff into a table. All right, well, that is how you create a database, actually create a table in that database and start putting your initial data into that database. So before you can actually start working with the database in your program, you need to actually create the database and then create the table for the database and put that initial data into the table. And then you'll actually be able to work with it just fine. So that's how you do that. Uh, next up, we'll actually start trying to work more with the data that's in a database, actually learn how to interface with them.